<clears throat> but let's get started so long, I think. Um, okay, so I think we're making good progress um, um, fleshing out uh, my sections. I've still got a few hours more work to do to get to get them in a decent format, but hopefully later on today I'll get most of that done. And we have Xing has volunteered. I see Xing has volunteered to um, to help with the data uh, with the key value access stores, but I don't have. I haven't had any interaction with him specifically. Do we need to invite him to this call or to this status update call maybe next week? Uh, yeah. It's that would have been the case. Yeah, he's volunteered to write those sections. Uh, he added comments to the doc. Uh, and yeah, he should definitely be added to all invitations and emails related to this. All right. Um, I'm really sorry. I just updated the table of contents and it's wiped out the comments we had put in about who's doing which sections. I think I remember them all, but um, Clint, do you want to give a quick update on the block stores and the file systems that you were looking at? Yep, I will. Uh, I just started working on the block this morning and uh, my plan was to, to flush it out this week. Uh, I've got I think I'm starting with the tables because I feel like filling in the tables will help me kind of fill out you know, what's what's the right type of more detailed information to put in the descriptions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I went through the first pass on the, the block table this morning and then I was going to do the file system table this afternoon. Uh, is there time for me to kind of ask feedback on, on the one quick thing in the block table to see what people think? Sure. Yeah. I, I guess I'm curious on on how we think that this should hold up, like against what type of, possibly against what type of technology. And this is where it always gets more subjective. But, you know, as we create this table, I, I'd look at one box, right? If we look at the, the local and then the performance box, uh, I put as, you know, in that box that, you know, it's limited by local components and it, can benefit low latency applications. I think that the obvious statement is it's limited by local components, but it sounds it sounds negative in the way that that's you know said. But in reality, it can be like the right thing. Like, and so I tie it in with that subjective statement of like, hey, this can be good for certain apps. Uh, do you guys think that that's the right thing to do in this table, or should it just be very objective, where it just states the obvious of it's limited by local components? Yeah, I don't feel too strongly about it. Uh, I mean, it does strike me that each one of the cells in that table could justify a whole paragraph almost. Um, right. Because as you say, there's quite a bit more to say there about performance of local disks. Um, and maybe maybe that's something we want to add in the second pass or you know, later. Uh, I think what you have in that particular cell right now is is good enough for the size of the cell. I'm sure it could be done differently or better, but uh, yeah. we do have limited space. And the intention of this table was that you could scan through it and you could say, oh, what is, how does the difference, or how does the performance of local versus remote versus distributed box stores compare? I can just read, you know, three sentences in the bottom row of the table and I get a reasonable idea of some generalities that may apply. Okay. Uh, that was sort of my thinking when I, I don't remember if Alex or I put this table together, but um, that was my thinking around these tables in general. Okay, so uh, it sounds like just a very like an objective statement, quickly in a few words, and then uh, a little bit of subjectivity to give some hints as to the direction that we're thinking or uh, help someone understand the rationale. Then, okay. Yeah, I would. I would also, uh, one thing I found that people struggle with is actually understanding what the magnitude of some of these differences is. Um, 
So, so putting some concrete numbers in there um, might be useful. So like you know, the durability or something like that, like the or availability, like nines or something like that? Yeah. Uh, you know, performance is, yeah, exactly uh, what you described. Performance of local disks, uh, everybody knows, I think is, what is it, 100 IOPS or something per spindle right. or 10,000 per SSD or whatever. <clears throat> Remote disks is, you know, orders of magnitude more than that. Yeah, I mean, well, then I, I think it gets a little bit more like on the local side with NVMe, it gets a little bit more complicated and uh, the numbers change. So that's why I have a hard time like putting in some of those types of details. Yeah, it, it, it is hard. I guess just knowing whether, you know, uh, additional overhead in network transport is a 2x factor or 200x factor is kind of useful. Right. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Thank you for that feedback. Okay. So my expectation is that I'll, uh, I'll be working through this and I think I'll skip over to the NAS table and then I'll start writing more details in the, uh, the descriptions in the appropriate sections. So I feel like I'll make some good progress this week. Hello, sorry, my MacBook chose the whole list of the American readers. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. So, so where were we? Um, the last I, I heard was that Clint was, you, you were going to run through the block for feedback? Oh, yeah, so I uh, just did some feedback on the block and uh, I'm pretty clear on, on how to fill out the information based on Quentin's feedback. And the uh, next one is going to be file system for the table. And then I'll go and fill in the, the descriptions uh, after that. So I feel like we'll make some good progress this week. OK. <clears throat> we, we do have, um, so we have one more session on the 18th of October. Um, and then we're sending out two comments um, to the wider, to, to, the, to the storage working group on the 26th. Um, do, we, do we want to try and, um, do we want to try and target the 18th or the 19th as the, as when we send out the email so that we give a few days um, to collate feedback and we can discuss at the working group. I would love to target that date. Um, I'm just whizzing through the document here. It's difficult to read it because it changes every time I read it. So I'm not quite sure which parts to reread, but um, it strikes me there's a lot of content missing still. Um, and maybe that's just subjective, but so volumes, are you doing that this week, Clint, did you say? Uh, yeah, so I'll commit that for, uh, for Friday to have my, my session done. So block stores and files. Okay. okay. So, so I'll, I'll, I'm committing to have basically all of the, all of the attributes and the storage layers completed by tomorrow. So, sorry, which section is that? Is that the one called storage stack slash layers? Uh, yes, correct. Okay, so that's another big missing piece. Okay. That'll help. Um, and, and the next page, I guess. And the next. 
So, so then the next section, the orchestration and management interfaces, I think Xing has done an amazing job and that, that looks fairly ready to me in terms of being ready to review. Then Clint is working on the block stores and the file systems this week. Um, who was working on the object stores? Was that yourself, Clinton? No. That's uh, uh, Lu Luis. Oh, that's right, Louis Cabron, yes. I'll, I'll ping him an email as a reminder. Sorry, I'm, I'm uh, struggling to, this document's kind of getting large. <laughs> so maybe, can, uh, does somebody want to just present? Um, sure, I can do that. And what I was thinking of doing was was actually scrolling through the document and just it's uh, if you just go through the table of contents, it's kind of difficult to get a picture of what's done and what's not. Can you can you see the doc? Yeah. Okay. So so the scope and the layout and the attributes of the storage system are done. Okay. The, um, the data access interface was what I was working on just a second before we joined the call. And I'm going to finish off. Okay, hold on before, before you uh, just go back up again. So, so volumes, block file system, shared file system, application, API, object store, key value store, databases. Uh, so volumes so is what? Clint's going to do is that right, including block and file system? Correct. Yes. So, 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 so that, that is just a very basic description to kind of say, this is what block is. This is what file systems are. Um, so it's 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 not too complicated. That's like a paragraph each. Yeah. Um, and then the the storage stack and the layers. Um, this probably needs. It's probably about half a page of content per layer that I need to add in. Um, Hold on, you're skipping over lots of stuff here that's not finished. Hold up. <laughs> Go back yeah, there. Sorry. Yeah. Is there a section that I'm that I'm not thinking about because when I assigned myself from the uh, from the initial list, it was uh, like right now the page is what twenty three and twenty four. And then I see there's like an empty volume section. So when you said volumes, were you referring to the block stores and file systems or were you referring to something else? But yeah, like that volumes, like who's assigned to that? This is, no, this is, this is me. Okay. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fill in this. Yeah, so, so you had the blocks and the file system section, correct? Okay, good, sorry. Um, the storage layers, that's me as well. And I'm, I'm filling in these sections. I think I need, um, there's about probably half a page of content for each of these that I need to finish off. Um, so there's six sections here, which needs filling in six or seven sections. And then- uh, Hi, Alex, uh, how, how, is, how is this section different from the latest part? Is this a more, uh, Briefer description compared to later the later sections. Uh, so, so, so this this section defines the different layers in um, in, a, in a storage system. So okay. we're talking, you know, we, we kind of said we want to differentiate the layers so that we can define common terms for things like the data protection and the transport layer and all of those sorts of things. Um, so that then the file system, the block, the object sections can, can be um, much briefer because they don't have to define all the data protection multiple times, for example. Okay. So, so I'm, defining, I'm defining these layers. I'm not, I'm not going into what a file system is or what a, what a um, you know, or examples of a file system or examples of a block store, for example, I'm not doing that in this place. That, that's in the block section and the file system section, which is later. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, 
so I finish off these layers um, by tomorrow, hopefully, and then this section, the orchestration and management interfaces, is the section that um, that uh, Xen has fleshed out. Uh, I think she did that last. You did that last week, correct? Uh, uh, yeah, it's done. Yeah. So, and this this covers native interfaces and the Docker volume interface and external interfaces um, and other framework and tools. So we have small sections for open EV, sorry, open SDS and Rexray and Rook. Just, um, just one quick comment, uh, Jing. Um, this is, I think, where things start getting dangerous, where, where we mention some projects and not others, and some products and not others. So, so just a heads up there, I think. <laughs> okay, so uh, what is your suggestion? You, <laughs> you prefer we don't mention them at all, or what? Uh, what? Well, I, I don't know. What, what okay. I know is once we open this up for review, mm -hmm. people are going to say, why is my framework not there? Right. Um, <laughs> so we either have to have an answer that says, you know, we only mention frameworks that are in the CNCF, or we have to say we only mention frameworks that fulfill some other properties, or we have to mention all the frameworks that people want mentioned in the document. Uh, and okay. mm -hmm. I think I'm, I'm just telling you that you're going to run into that problem. I'm pretty sure. I don't know what Ben's got <laughs> more experience than I have with this, but that would be my prediction. So, right. so, so Alex, what is, what's your thoughts on this? So, so, We're never going to make everybody happy here, um, whether it's on the orchestration and, and sort of framework tools, or whether it's in the examples we give in the block section or the file system section or the object store section. I think we have to. I think we have to be pragmatic and focus on some of the some of the main things, and possibly we can use the CNCF landscape as sort of criteria as to whether we we put data in or not, but, but again, right, we, we can't put every single system in. It's, it's, it's crazy because there are lots and lots and lots of systems. Yeah, yeah I think uh, like devil's advocate side, you know, people, like if we took certain things out, like people are going to look at it as incomplete possibly. You know, if we're describing what's going on in cloud native, we don't list any projects and you know, people may think that we're just you know, missing the boat completely. Like, I, I think we're, we're damned if we do, damned if we don't on any side of this. So it's really tough. <laughs> and, and so I, I would go with some type of a, a description like Quentin had suggested. And, you know, maybe it's that they're a CNCF project. Maybe it's that they've presented to the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the working group or, or presented to uh, the TOC. Maybe it's some type of a statement like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if, if another approach isn't perhaps to um, just have extremely brief uh, descriptions of these projects with links to, you know, the, the more detailed description and then categorize them because some of them are going to be, you know, you, presumably you can break those frameworks down mm -hmm. into categories of some sort and essentially make it open to just about anything. Um, uh, just, just a thought, rather than okay. um, pick three and describe them in a fair amount of detail and then have to explain why we're not including the other 300. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm exaggerating. <clears throat> yeah. is, this the, is this something that we can push back on the TOC and just say, hey, we're leaving this section open and you know, here's here's our suggestion of the things we we would include and no we can't because i am the toc and i don't want to have to solve that problem <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's our job here is to solve that problem right is this important in this first round that we we include these do you think that like the first draft should just avoid you know uh, including the projects and, and tackle out the second draft because the, the ecosystem is in flux, right? I mean, I think, you know, CSI is going to be EA at the end of the year, possibly. And things are going to change even more at that point. 
So maybe uh, maybe we can defer it to the next next round. I just want us to be consistent, and and yeah. I just want us to mention either only mention things that are in the CNCF and explicitly say we're only listing things that are in the CNCF or cover the landscape more broadly, which I think was our mandate here, in which case right. we need to cover more than that. So, so we did look at the, the landscape, but we can take a look and see if there's more that we should add here. Maybe just to make each paragraph just like one or two sentence and then doesn't really elaborate on what exactly. <laughs> This is <laughs> so, so, so my two cents. It, it, we, we can we can use any type of criteria, and it will always end up being wrong. <laughs> so so the and the reason why I'm making this point is none of the criteria that we can ever debate on is going to definitely make this right. I don't, on a personal level, I don't think that saying that it's a CNCF project um, is is a useful criteria because I agree. You know, talking about object stores and you know not mentioning the object services like S3 or or, or whatever from from the cloud providers is is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, so so I would strongly focus on making this making some pragmatic decisions. So we choose things which are um, in wide use to some definition of wide use, whatever that makes sense, but not be discriminatory. I, if somebody really feels that their project should be included, well, they can write up a paragraph and we can choose to include it or we can choose to put a link to it. But I, I don't think we, you know, I don't think we, we should ignore the fact that the audience for this is end users and they want to be able to find out what the pragmatic solutions are, right? It's, it's not about, it's, this, this isn't about sort of being um, the most fully comprehensive list and it's not about restricting who gets into the document. It's, it's about finding some sort of medium which is based on what end users find useful and that is inherently subjective. So if anybody feels that they've been completely left out, then and they feel really strongly about it, then we can always add a paragraph in later on. What if we just take the I mean the, the part about that statement which, which worries me is allowing them to write their own paragraph because I think that you know that they have the ability to say what they want and it, it can turn into a bunch of marketing and then we have to go back and forth about with them about what they're going to say and. Uh, I mean, what if we just break down the, the current storage landscape that we have uh, that's published by CNCF and we just you know, list like wh where those projects fit and we just do a link to their project page. So we, we take the kind of the framework of, you know, whether they're a framework, an interface, et cetera, a tool, and we just classify what we have in landscape and provide links to the project pages to get the description. I, I actually prefer Alex's proposal, and, and that's essentially what I was trying to say, and Alex said it much more eloquently than I did, uh, which is we need a criteria. Otherwise, it's random, and we're going to have meaningless arguments with people about why we included one and not another thing. So the, the criteria that Alex, criterion that Alex suggested is most widely used. And that's subjective, but you know the editor has discretion as to whether something classifies as widely used or not, sufficiently widely used to make it into the document. But at least we're telling people that's what the criterion is, and we can say in the document, the following are some of the most widely used storage systems. Um, and then we, you know, perhaps give a brief description about each one. Um, <clears throat> and then one way of doing a catch-all for the rest is to say, other systems that we're aware of are the following, and just have a you know a list, a comma-separated list of links to uh, you know other stuff. So, and if anybody wants to claim that their thing exists, um, and uh, we could just put it in that list, <clears throat> and that way they can feel they've been included in the doc, but we don't have to clutter the doc up with descriptions of things that that are not as much interest to the rest of the reading public of the doc. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. 
and Clint, just to be clear, what I'm what I'm trying to avoid is uh, one of the. I mean, we, we actually have a duty here to the readers to provide value um, and filter through all the noise and stuff. And I think if all we're going to do is like enumerate all the storage systems that exist out there, uh, I think we're not doing them that service. Um, no, I, I agree with you, and, and I guess the 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 source that I was thinking about was what CNCF has already published. I wouldn't say everything, but if, if Dan and CNCF has decided they want to put this thing on the landscape, then, then yeah, we can tell people why it's on the landscape. Um, but that's the only thing that I was thinking about. And uh, uh, yeah. so, so, I mean, if I had more insight into what's on the landscape and why it's there, uh, I might be able to get behind that idea, but, but I, I don't even know what are the criteria for being on the landscape? Uh, are you asking me or? Yes. Uh, from what I know so far, it had to do with the, uh, the funding level and whether Dan decided to put them on or not. Yeah, uh, that, that was my suspicion and that's exactly why I don't think you could use it as a source. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't even think it's the funding level. I, I think it's whoever raises uh, a GitHub PR for the landscape gets in because there are a ton of projects on there which are which are not even you know members of the CNCF. Yeah, that is by design, um, but uh, because there were complaints that there were very you know before Amazon joined the CNCF, you know S three wasn't under object stores and people were like, what the hell's going on here? Mm. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, so I think we have a duty to do that. If, if somebody can find out uh, a more uh, compelling reason why the landscape is, has a curation as to what gets onto the landscape and what doesn't, and if, if that curation principle is these are commonly used things that people want to know about, then we can use it. I don't think that is the criterion in practice, and so therefore we should just do, do our own one. Um, <clears throat> By all means, we can double check against the landscape and say, is this stuff on the landscape that we forgot about? Um, I, I don't want to beat this dead horse, but uh, Goo, are, are you out there? I see you joined. I don't know if you were listening to this part of the conversation. Maybe not. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's move on. But that, that's my commentary here is we, we need to be consistent about what's in the document and what's not. Um, and anticipate complaints from people whose technologies are not in the document. Okay, um, so moving on. Um, we don't have, we don't, you know, as, as predicted, there isn't, there isn't a huge um, sort of, uh, amount of information on application interfaces or management interfaces for for object stores or, or key value stores or databases. Like, you know, there are some there's some work on this and obviously there are APIs available from um, cloud services, but this, this is kind of a, one of the one of the points I, I mentioned in the differentiation, which is um, certainly the volumes uh, are a much more mature management interface and orchestrated interface than anything else. Um, so then we have the block store section, which, um, which Clint is filling in. Um, and we have the file systems. And then we have the object stores. So can somebody remind me? Oh, yes, it was Louis Pabon who was doing the, the, the object stores. I'll, I'll, I'll ping him. And then I'll ping Xing as well around the key value stores. Um, we agreed last time then that the, um, the database section will probably take out of the first version of the draft. Just I, so I see some why is volunteering for the database section. I think the, the same person who is going to work on the key value 
um, what is his name? Lushang. He, I think he added the, yeah. you look at the beginning. Uh, oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, I think he added a comment there, say he can, he can do a database section. He, he added a comment somewhere oh, fantastic. In, in the beginning. Oh, I just got a message from him yesterday, which I haven't replied to. I'll, I'll, I'll remind him and ask him if he can have it done by the 18th. All right. Could, could, you, um, could you copy me on that email? Sure. And, and, sure. it, and just volunteer me to help or whatever if he needs yeah, to exactly. for it. I think I, I did already and he did reply to it and he did copy you on the reply. Okay, um, I'll reply to that then. So, so maybe it's actually easier if you just chase him up. Um, reason yeah. being you're sort of coordinating all the people and getting the doc finished. So I don't want to be out on a side road somewhere. So yeah, just reply to that email that you copied on and uh, I'll give him the timelines and deadlines and things. Okay. Um, and then... And then we have the we have the appendix, which is um, well. We have some we have some data that there. Xiang has, has. Am I pronouncing this right? Is that Xiang? Xiang, yeah, Xiang. <laughs> <laughs> um, is uh, um, put the small comments there. I think that kind of makes sense, but. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll resolve all that. I, I have on my to-do list to add the two and three phase commit and uh, just write a little paragraph under each of the other headings there. And then I think the appendix is done. Cool. All right. So that's, that's it. That's the end of the doc. Yeah, I, I guess my, my big concern is that the actual body of the doc is largely empty. <laughs> there were many pages we scrolled past there that are completely empty. Uh, and I'm becoming increasing, you know, we've been at it since May, I guess. Um, and arguably the really important parts are totally missing. Um, so yeah, we, we just need to, it's not unachievable in the next week, but uh, we're rapidly running out of time. Uh, that's a fair comment. I think um, there has been quite a bit of thought put into it, and I think we can we can we can speed up. I can certainly cover my stuff by by Friday. Um, okay. Clint, this is where it's you and me having maybe um, a one on one call, and we can sort of brainstorm some of the file system, the block stuff. Would that would that help? Uh, yeah, if you if you want to, if you feel like you've got some some input or some uh, perspective that would accelerate my work, then sure. Um, cool. All right, I'll, I'll I'll ping you I'll ping you offline and just to decide the time. Okay. Cool. Okay. Did, did we have anything else to cover? Uh, so let's just, I wanted to make sure that we're clear on the, the timeline, make sure that that's updated. Uh, we were talking about the 24th as being when the, the next SWG is meeting. And you guys wanted to send out something prior to the 24th to, uh, to let people review before the SWG. So does that mean send it out Monday or does that mean send it out uh, the Friday before? Well, I think Monday at the latest, right? So, so we target for Friday then on Monday at the latest. So, like the nineteenth is when we'd want to send it out. Yeah, and that basically means that next Thursday when we meet, we'd be doing a go no go on uh, on sending this thing out. Correct. <clears throat> I, I, I think um, we should also kind of say that if one or two of the sections isn't completed in time, we should still solicit feedback, I think, because we, can, we, we shouldn't sort of use the whole doc being ready as the gate. If, if there are certain sections which are, which are ready to review earlier, we, we can do that too.
Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yep, I'm okay with that. Cool. All right. Did we have anything else on the agenda for the working group? I think that's it. Do you have anything else for us, Clinton? Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me. I've lost a window here and I think I might be muted. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you. <laughs> Probably heard, means you heard me chewing my cereals as well. Um, uh, no, I, I was just, I, I was thinking of personally actually reading through the doc like the day before next Thursday, because by then it should be mostly complete and largely in the state that it will be when we send it out to the rest of the group. Uh, but I was also wondering whether, yeah, I mean, we, we need to have some internal real review uh, before we send it out, I think. Um, so maybe others want to do roughly the same thing. Just go through all the content as it is, uh, ideally as it is by next Wednesday, but you might only have time before that. And at least make sure that you're comfortable with what's in the document or, or provide any input if there's egregious stuff there. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't sense. think there is, but you know, I haven't read it all in detail. All I've really been doing is keeping track of roughly what's done and what's not done. And I flipped through the first draft, but it's changed a lot since then. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so we would just be communicating through email, right? Are we going to have another meeting next uh, Thursday or no? Yeah, we have a we have a meeting on Thursday. I'll send that. I'll send okay. that an invite. Does any particular preference on time? Does this sort of time on Thursday work? Uh, well, you, you mean Thursday the eleven, 18th. eleven or twelve? What what time you're talking about? Eleven or twelve or eight or nine? You're talking about? Um, so it would be eleven Eastern, like like today. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Does, does that work for you guys too, Clinton? Clinton? Yes. Um, next Thursday? Yeah. Uh, let me take a peek. Yeah, I'm good for that. Cool. All right. I'll send that to you. Okay. And uh, yeah, make sure you in, invite Liang and, and just touch base with him before so he knows exactly what's expected of him by then. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. <clears throat>